Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to implement these animated GIF arrows on your website. Now, it's not hard to just drop an image element in and insert a GIF, but in this video, I'll show you how to apply these via a class so that the stickers are reusable on whichever elements you need them on. So first things first, let's jump into Oxygen and get started setting up our design. So I'm gonna use a div here and add some padding to it. So we'll do 128 pixels all the way around and we'll set the height to 100 VH. This would be kind of like a landing page or splash page or something like that. So then we're gonna to want to set up the background. We'll choose kind of a dark blue, kind of like in our example there move down kind of more to the purplish side. And that looks pretty good. And now we can add in our background image from the example I showed at the beginning of the video. So we'll drop that in. And then we'll just wanna make some adjustments to it. We'll probably set the size to uh, maybe manual. No, we'll do auto here and we'll set it to no repeat. And then we'll center it on the horizontal axis. So we'll do 50%. And because we're gonna have white text on top of this background image, I do want to kind of dim it a little bit, which the best way to do that in this case is gonna to be to apply a gradient, which lets us also add some more visual interest. So the first color is gonna be pretty dark, pretty similar to our background color. In fact, let's go back and grab our background color. We'll make it a global color so that it's easily accessible from other color pickers. And then we'll go back to background and gradients and we'll use that global color. That way we have a nice bit of consistency. Now for our second color in the gradient, I'm gonna do something kind of light um, on this kind of pinkish red area. So this is gonna be similar to the colors in the background image itself. Now I wanna reduce the opacity of these quite a bit because we still want to see our little spiral design in the background, but we're kind of de-emphasizing it a little bit so that our text can stand out. So we'll raise that one up a bit and then we'll set the angle to 120 pixels. So it's a pretty subtle effect, but it should help bring our white text out against that background color, against that background image. Now let's go ahead and add in a heading and we'll keep this as an H1 since it's gonna be the only heading on this page. And let's change the text to, we build great websites. And let's change the font family to Fiala one and change the text color to white. Now I want this to be pretty big, but since my text is a little bit longer than the example that I showed at the beginning, it may not need to be quite that big. So we'll do something like uh, 72 pixels looks pretty good. Now we'll wanna to go to advanced typography and make sure it's text aligned centered there. And then let's select the div and align everything to the center. Now we're gonna have a little bit of descriptive text below this, so we'll drop in a text element, change its color to white so that we can see it. And let's change the font family to Meriwether. And then we will just paste in some warm ipsum. So I'll do ipsum 1p. And I'm using a, an app called Text Expander that lets me type in that ipsum 1p shorthand and it pastes in uh, one paragraph of warm ipsum. Now I want to narrow this text down a little bit. So we'll go to size and spacing. And we'll set the width to 100%, but we'll set the max width to 768 pixels. That looks pretty good. Let's go back to our heading and go to typography. I do want to adjust the line height here. So we'll change the line height to 1.2 and then we'll add some bottom margin. We'll do something like 16 pixels. I usually like to work with an eight point base or eight pixel base. So I'm using eight, 16, 32, et cetera. But for this, we'll leave it at 16. And then we're gonna go down below this text element and we're gonna add a columns element because I wanna have a few items here that I can add these GIFs to. So we'll do two columns. And then of course this text needs some margin below it. So we'll do a little bit more margin here, maybe 32 pixels to get a bit more separation. Now on our column divs, let's change their padding a bit. It defaults to 20, but I think I want it to be 32 on these. So we'll do that on both of these, advanced size and spacing, 32 pixels of padding all the way around. Now what I'm gonna do is I'll design a quick card 
This will be like maybe a pricing box situation where we have two items and we want to call them out with these gifts. So we'll add a div. We'll go ahead and add a class to this. We'll call it card. Now we'll set the background color to white and we'll go to advanced borders and set an eight pixel border radius. Then we'll go to advanced size and spacing and set the width to 100%. Now we do need some padding here, so let's do 16 pixels all the way around. And then we can start dropping in some elements. Let's drop in a text, this will be our title. Let's uh, duplicate that, and that'll be our description. And then let's add a link wrapper. This will be our button here. So we'll do a link wrapper with some text inside, and we'll add some classes to these things. So this will be card underscore underscore title to denote that it is an element within the card component. And then we'll do card underscore underscore description here. And then this one will be card underscore underscore button. So we've got some classes set up here and we can start to design these. And since we're using a uh, class-based design, we can go ahead and duplicate this and move it over to the right side column so that we see how both cards are gonna work out. First, let's go ahead and We'll start working on the title here. So we definitely need the font family to match our display font. So we're gonna do that. Normally on a real site build, you would set this in Oxygen's global styles. But here, since we're just building out the one page, we're gonna set it uh, on the class. And the text color is probably okay, but we could go with this dark color here just for some consistency. And then we're gonna go with something like maybe 32 pixels of font size. And then let's go to advanced typography, set the line height to 1.2, and then advanced size and spacing and set the margin to 16. Now we have a description here, so we're gonna drop in some more lorem ipsum, and that's gonna be a little bit too much for this particular layout, so let's get rid of that much. And we'll paste this over here on this element really quickly. And then let's add some margin below that as well. We'll do 32 pixels here. I usually like to base my spacing on the relationship of the two elements. In the case of the title and description, they're very closely related, but the button needs to kind of stand on its own. Now let's go down and start designing the button. First, let's change the text and say, choose this option. And we'll do that on both instances of the card. Now we can go back up to the link wrapper, make sure our class is selected and start styling. So let's go to advanced size and spacing. Let's do something like eight pixels of padding on the top and bottom, and then 32 pixels on the left and right. That gives us that kind of button-like aspect ratio. Okay, now we have to decide how we want to style this button. I think I want to go with a darker background color, and we'll choose the background color of this dark purple that we've used elsewhere. And then we'll go to advanced typography and just set our color to white. The reason I set it on the button and not the text is so that I don't have to set up a, a whole other class for the text to add those styles. And then I do want to change the font family to match our display font. And then I do want to add some rounded borders. So we'll go to advanced borders and set a border radius of eight pixels. Now let's change the title card one, description, card two, description. And I do want to make an adjustment to our background div size here. So we're going to go to advanced size and spacing. I'm going to get rid of the height 100 VH. I'm just going to set it to min height 100 VH. So it can still scale if the content gets taller. Perfect. Now we're ready to do some stuff with the gifts, which is what we're all here for. So let's say card one is the thing we want people to focus on. And we want to draw attention to it. Traditionally, you could add some different styles, a different background color, change its size a bit, or something like that to emphasize it. But in this case, we want to add a GIF. So what we'll do with this card is we'll add another class called GIF Arrow Left. This is going to tell us that this class will add a GIF Arrow on the left side of the card. And in fact, to be more accurate, let's do Top Left. So then we know from the class name that this element will have a GIF arrow on the top left. Now on this class, I do wanna to go to advanced layout and set position to relative because that is gonna be necessary to absolutely position the GIF 
itself. Once that's done, we can actually go ahead and lock this selector because we're not gonna do anything else in the GUI. But we do need the class name here, so I'm going to copy it and then go back to the card class. And now we're gonna do some stuff with some custom CSS. So we'll add a style sheet and call it GIFs. And what we wanna do is we wanna target that GIF arrow top left class, but we're gonna target the after pseudo element. So colon colon after. And then we're gonna add some CSS here. So we're gonna do content, these after elements and before elements always need content, even if it's blank, just to show up. And then we're gonna do a background image, URL, and then we're gonna jump over to our media library and grab one of these GIFs. So I've already uploaded a few. I grabbed them from giphy.com. If you go over to giphy.com and go to stickers, for instance, you're gonna find a bunch of stuff. Let's search for arrow. Then we'll go ahead and choose stickers here. And that'll give us a selection of arrows with transparent backgrounds that we can use on our design. So I grabbed a few of those and already uploaded them. Let me go ahead and copy the URL to my clipboard from my media library. And then we're gonna go ahead and paste that in here. So that adds it as a background image. And we'll set the background size to cover for now. I think that will be sufficient. We'll set the width to 128 pixels, height to 128 pixels. And then we'll set the position to absolute. We need to move it a bit. So we're gonna set the uh, left to negative 100% for right now. Nope, that's gonna be way too much. So let's set it to negative 10%, and that's gonna start to move it left. So let's set it to negative 25%. That looks pretty close to what we want. And then on top, we're gonna set it to negative 25% also. Okay, so we have the arrow in sort of the position we want. But before we can get it exactly where we want it, we need it to be rotated a bit. So we're gonna do transform, rotate, 20 degrees. We're gonna do negative 40 degrees. And we'll just adjust that until it's pointing the way that we like. So let's jump that up to negative 80 degrees and there we go. Now we can see that it's a little bit too close to the card, so we'll go negative 30% on that. And then maybe negative 30% on the top will give us the space that we need. That looks pretty good. We can adjust it if we'd like to be further up or smaller or bigger or whatever. In fact, let's set it to a little bit smaller here, 64 pixels width, and then that's 63. We need 64 and then 64 here. So you can see it's a little bit smaller and then our positioning needs to be adjusted. So we can go negative 10%, nope, negative 20. And then negative 20 here also will probably work. Let's try negative 15 on the left position. There we go. So now we have this little call out. That looks pretty cool. Um, so what we wanna do now is take a look on the front end and make sure everything looks pretty good. So we'll jump up to the front end here. Now you can see that the positioning is a bit off, so let's go back and try using pixel values instead. So we'll do negative 64 pixels. We know that's the width of our element, and then top negative 64 pixels. That should put us right about where we wanna be. And hopefully it will have a more consistent result on the front end, so let's refresh. And you can see that that does work much better. So now that immediately draws our attention over to card one, which is exactly what we want in this case. But what if we didn't wanna emphasize card one and instead we wanna emphasize card two? It would be a major pain if we had to go through all that trouble again. Luckily, we do not. All we need to do is select our card, remove this class, and then select card two and add the class there. So we called it what? GIF arrow top left. And like that, we now have an arrow on the top left of card two. Absolutely beautiful. And in fact, if we wanted to call out our headline, GIF arrow top left, just like that. We'll just add it to everything, why not? Now, I would discourage you from having this many animated GIFs all at once. They really should be used to emphasize. Or if your design is really playful, you can use them uh, a bit more prevalently throughout your design, but for most sites, one or two of these things is gonna be sufficient. Now the cool thing is, we could go ahead into our GIFs and we could copy this and paste it and we could do like a top 
right arrow. So let's change that to top right. We're gonna use the same settings except for our position is gonna be a little different. So let's go down to this card too and we'll create a GIF arrow top right and we'll add that and then we're going to copy our styles from GIF arrow top left to GIF arrow top right. And then we'll remove the top left class. You can see our arrow stays because we've already set up that top right class in our style sheet, but we need to position it on the right. So we'll change the left value to right. And like that, we have it on the top right, but it's rotated incorrectly. So we'll set this to zero degrees, or actually we can just remove the transform completely. And now we have that top right. So we can add this top right arrow to this card. And you can see once you do the initial setup, which is a little bit involved with some custom CSS and you might have to tweak it depending on the GIF you're using. But once you've done that initial setup, having these GIFs applied to a pseudo element on a class makes it super easy to reuse them to point out elements or emphasize elements in your design. Again, you could totally use an image element and absolutely position it, but it just gets a little bit messy and a little bit finicky to do it that way. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to use animated GIFs in your Oxygen website design. Thank you very much for watching.